We la voce from I Puritani, and my guest Virginia Ziani tells me that she sang this role for the first time under very unusual circumstances. Yes, I was called in Florence in '52 to sing this opera uh, without, uh, you know, I had no rehearsals, and I never sang this opera before, and I had to uh, to replace Callas, who was singing at the time. Uh, Norma, she sang the first uh, performance, and then she had to sing Norma in La Scala. So they called me, and uh, Maestro Serafin heard me singing, and she told me, oh, "Oh, you know perfectly well the opera. You have not to have rehearsals. I have no time to rehearse. You go on." And in two days, I went on in this Puritani, and I remember that uh, it was so a big success that I had to do encore this aria. And in this opera, my husband was singing the role of uh, Sir George, my father. But I, I saw him only in the evening. He didn't even know who, the, who I, I was. So he asked me after the first duet and the first act, who are you? From where are you coming? Mm. Because he was not advised that it's not more the Callas in that evening. He came th- from La Scala. Too. So I told, well, I'm Virginia Zeani, and I sang for a few years, Traviata, etc. But my God, you are great. So... Um, and the end of the opera, I, well, he went to La Scala and in the second performance came another uh, basso. So I didn't see him for four years. And when I saw him in 56, then I married him. So in 1952, the sparks didn't fly. <laughs> no. It came later. <laughs> no. Uh, you mentioned Callas. I had all the time. <laughs> so I have to bring up Callas. Uh, what did you think of her? How? Well, she was certainly uh, the greatest singer, like they say, at our century. With her small defects, that they were the position of the sound, sometimes not even, but her musicality, her phrasing, her uh, way of, uh, of captivating the public was incredible. On the stage, Maria was a lion. In the life, too, but, you know, on the stage <laughs> it's important to be a lion, you know. I was not a lion. I, I like it on the stage to be always romantic, to be uh, more more pure, no, never aggressive, you know. And this was my, um, not my limits, it, is, uh, it was my desire to be, while Maria was absolutely a lion on the stage. And certainly uh, Meneghini, with his force, um, psychical force, because psychical force, because he loved her so deeply, convinced her that she was the best in the world, and uh, this helped her a lot. Yes, it built up her. Uh, her it ego. was a great personality. I'm sorry that she she finished her life so uh, very unhappily. Sadly. Yes, very, very sad. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, let's not stay in a sad mood very long because our next musical selection will brighten us all. It will be the comic duet from Donizetti's L'Elysir d'Amore, and you'll be partnered by your late husband, Nicola Rossi Lemeni. My guest, Virginia Ziani, and her late husband, the basso, Nicola Rossi Lemeni. And uh, I must say that in 1958, you sounded like um, quite a team. Mm-hmm. By then, you must have been singing a lot together. Well, we sang together 14 uh, different operas. Uh, we sang together Sonnambula and so Julius Caesar, certainly, and then a lot of other operas. Even the, um, the Modern Cathedral on the record, uh, Pizzetti asked me to do the Corifea, you know, in the record that uh, he has done, but not on the theater because I just had the baby. So uh, Pizzetti wrote this opera for my husband, um, the Modern Cathedral, and then some other opera. Uh, we lanced uh, the um, uh, Hoffman tells all the roles. She sa- he sang all the roles and we have done this even in La Scala in Milano and I sang the, the, all the three and four roles, you yes. know, in uh, Hoffman tells. And we sang Piccolo Mara, who is a Mascagni yes. opera yes. and nobody knows about it, but we have a nice record done, uh, I think by Chetra, and then we have done this record in an afternoon, <laughs> you know, yes. all the record in an afternoon. I must say, luckily I have that record. Yes. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you, in your early years, who were some of the singers who inspired you? Well, I have to say, I was inspired by all of them, because all of them, they had great qualities. First of all, I was inspired with uh, Beniamino Gigli. I sang with Gigli in 950 uh, in Cairo. 
the King Farouk was there, and after sang with it, him and Gino Becchi, uh, we had the gold medal of the merit of the monarchy, you know. Mm. So it was very interesting. Gili, I learned how to breathe from him because he was so calm in a way of breathing, you know, in a way of acting on the stage. Well, he was very kind. He was saying that at that time, what a pity that it's between us, it's 40 years difference <laughs> and 40 kilos, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then I, I, uh, I, Pavarotti has his debut in Lucia and in Traviata with me. Then he, he sang one year before Bohem with Freni. Then uh, I, Domingo has his debut in Manon Puccini with me in uh, in the seventies in, in Barcelona. So I sang with all these great tenors. I sang with Mario del Monaco Otello by Verdi. I sang with Corelli, just my debut in La Scala in uh, Julio Caesar. What about among the older singers, the singers preceding your generation? Were there any? examples or, or, well, or uh, inspirations? Yes, all of them, you know, not only Pertile, who was my idol, certainly, but uh, all the great singers, uh, the, the, the ladies, important ladies, not only Tebaldi and the Callas, and, uh, but uh, I heard the records of the others because I That's was... What I meant. Maria Caniglia, I heard her in La Scala in my time. She was a fantastic, uh, dramatic soprano. How about Muzio? Oh, well, I, this is the problem. Uh, I have never heard Muzio right. in my life because she was dead when I arrived By that in Italy. Time, yes. But Pertile spoke to me so much about her that a lot of people, when I sang the first time in South America, in Brazil, and uh, they uh, compared me to Muzio. It's mm. very strange because I never met her and mm. I never heard her records. I heard her records uh, now, 10, 20 years ago, because I was... Uh, very curious to know why I was compared to Muzio. Everybody says the Muzio, it's again in life, you know. So I loved Muzio. The, the See, I'm not surprised that they compared you with Muzio because Muzio had a certain intensity that you seem to project into your uh, verismo roles. Yeah. Uh, well, later, yes, certainly. In in the first period of my life, I like it always to have the most pure sound. I had a lyric sound because I learned Traviata with Bohem, with Faust, Marguerite and Faust. But I like it always to have this kind of purity in the sound. I never like it to, to change the color and the placement of the sound. My guest is Virginia Ziani, and we were talking about uh, certain of the ideas and ideals that she conveys to her students about how to project a certain type of singing into the coloratura or leggero uh, quality and how to become more dramatic. But in this connection, I'd like to ask you, as you passed from your light roles to the dramatic roles, was it your decision or were you under pressure by certain conductors to take on Well, I was, uh, uh, my decision in a way, certainly, but uh, some conductors, they asked me to do more dramatic roles when I started to be 40. I start so young, in, in uh, 48, so when I, I was in uh, around 68 or so, I tried to... Uh, uh, to change a little bit my repertoire. I had enough to sing Lucia, Puritani, and, uh, well, Traviata never enough because it was always a joy to sing Traviata. But I um, I had the pleasure to um, uh, have my debut in Aida when I was 42 and after 20 years of career because Zubin Mehta, who made his debut in opera, his first opera was Traviata with me in Florence, he asked me to do Aida.